you very much. Just a quick go at some of the questions you pose from online. The farm to table concept, of course, is critical as we encourage our citizens and residents to utilize more fresh fruits and vegetables as part of the regular diet. So that is something we want to encourage. Indeed, there is a new brand of tourism that also embodies the farm to table concept where persons are able to get as much fresh foods. Um, fruits and vegetables is as part of their, their stay at hotels. That has become a major attraction and indeed Taiwan has been a very good example of these. The broiler production, again we are happy to hear that the position or the announcement made tonight by Minister Jeffers is one which persons have been looking to hear. How do we get deeper, I should say, in the broiler production aspect? Many years ago, Springfield Egg Farm had been involved in a big way in broiler production. Over time, that aspect of it was lost, and we largely had become a country self-sufficient for 11 months of the year in terms of egg production. We need to be able now to utilize the, the whole chicken, as we would say, as part of our efforts at food security, and we import a substantial quantity of poultry products into the Federation. If we could save some of that by displacing the imports by quality, I stress quality, chicken produced here in St. Kitts and Nevis, that would take us a long way. And that will create employment for many more persons and of course a chain of activities that would benefit the country as a whole. To the caller from Central Bastia, who inquired about land and its availability, the short answer is that in Central Bastia, there is no publicly available lands. And so the government, as part of the movement forward, as part of the program for the redevelopment of Bastia, we are looking at the possibilities of acquiring or purchasing would be a better word private property, some of the abandoned properties throughout McKnight and elsewhere in Bastia and make them available for housing. Additionally, we will give incentives to persons who have these abandoned properties for them to be able to put them into a better state of availability and add to the housing stock in the country. Nonetheless, I would suggest to the applicant that on the application form, you should perhaps put anywhere if you are so inclined. A lot of time persons want land in Bastia, but there is none. There is no land in East Bastia. There is no public land in Central Bastia. So those two large areas are without land in proximity. What we have are some limited lands available in West Bastia. The government policy is that land in West Bastia would be shared across the Bastia belt. And we should also add that land citizens in St. Kitts and Nevis have a right to live anywhere in their country. So because you're from St. Paul's or Old Road, you should not be denied an opportunity in Bastia if that probability exists that you can have and you can pay for it. So we don't want people to be, begin to think in a parochial way that the lands in this particular area belongs only to people from that area. That will not happen in the context of the shortage we are talking about in some areas. And equity and citizenship, of course, must have value. So if you apply, if you have to put Anywhere land is available, that will make it easier. Because in some areas, there is not a shortage of land for residential purpose. While in others, Central Bastia, there isn't any land. East Bastia, there isn't. And so that will provide a greater scope for the engagement. Those who ask about the seven spearmen, I was advised last week by the Minister of Labor 
Honorable Wendy Phipps, that $11 million, a substantial sum, had been provided by the Ministry of Finance for them to begin the payout. So any holdup in payout is not for shortage of cash, although the fund had been exhausted. And so this administration has had to put $11 million into the fund to facilitate the payout of severance benefits. That process, go, that process is a, a long one because there are several steps. The employer is involved, the Social Security is involved, the Ministry of Labor is involved, and in the circumstances in which we are now living, the Ministry of Finance is also involved. But we are working towards that. The important thing is that once you submit a claim, the Department of Labor should be able to say to you where your claim is at. Are they waiting on Social Security? Because Social Security has to supply data that is used for verification of the claims that are put. Social Security is, as it were, the depository for labor records to the extent that every employer is obliged by law to submit a return each month. Social Security then can confirm you had been employed for 10 years, 15 years, whatever the period of time, and therefore help the Labor Department in assessing the claim. We want this process to speed up. What I can undertake to do will be to require of the Labor Department a regular reporting of the number of claims that are being processed and from sectors. So we are working in that caller. If you do not get a response, save it in another couple of weeks. I will invite you to call 661-1136. Give your name, give your particulars, and we will attempt to inquire where your particular situation is. The person who WhatsApp about the election of Dr. Janice Daniel Hodge as a leader of the NARP, Clearly, we welcome and board every citizen to feel confident enough to participate in the democratic process. She is a citizen we wish her well, and that reality, we hope, would inspire more females to want to move forward in the political domain at the highest level. We are a free society, we are a democratic society, and the political parties are at the fulcrum of the democratic life in St. Kitts and Nevis. In terms of my own closing remarks, again, I want to commend all those who have taken the time every Tuesday, and some persons have said to me since this program has started, they have not missed one edition. So I want to say thank you very much for paying attention and tuning in. Equally, I want to thank those who not only tune in, and we have about four or five platforms on which this program is carried. Facebook, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, ZIZ Radio and TV. And so there are multiple media to which one can get connected to this program. We want to thank all of you who take the time to call in to hear your views and your concerns. This is what this program is about. It is the government at the highest level holding itself accountable to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis and residents here. We do that because we value you. You are important to us. People matter most for the unity government in St. Kitts and Nevis. And so every opportunity that we can connect with you we welcome that opportunity, and I want to thank you. As we go about celebrating our 37th anniversary of independence, I want to say thank you to all those who made it happen, those who were in the vineyard for many years. For example, the right excellent Robert Batcher, who is our first national hero, and others of that league. Right now, we boast of five national heroes. So Robert Batcher, Sir Paul Southwell, Sir Joseph in France, Sir Simeon Daniel, and Sir Kennedy Simmons. 
who is our living national hero. Tomorrow we salute all of them, we pay tribute to them, and we thank them for their service and their contribution to nation building. We want to add to what they have left to us. We want to create a quality of life in St. Kitts and Nevis that is far superior than anyone would imagine. We need all of us to work hard to achieve that goal. The stronger and safer future is still realizable, notwithstanding we are at a very difficult point in the history of St. Kitts and Nevis and in the history of mankind. COVID-19 has wrecked societies wreck economies. St. Kitts and Nevis stands, as it were, in a strong position, or we stood in a strong position when COVID-19 knocked at our doors. We have been able to weather the storm, but for us to move to the Canaan land, for us to build the Garden of Eden, and interestingly, tonight we were talking about farmers and fishers. Could you imagine? The Garden of Eden, without fruits and vegetables, among other things, and fishes. So we need the support of the farmers, and I want to thank them all for their contribution to the health and wellness and welfare of St. Kitts and Nevis. I hail them all. I want, of course, to hail up a young farmer I met recently from Sadler's. Andre Patrick, I think his name was, 15 acres is a lot of land on the cultivation. I want to thank George Jeffrey from Tabernacle, Simas, Sam Julius, and all the others who are engaged actively in the production. Palmer from Mansion, Williams from Mansion, Gilbert, Debbie Gilbert from Phillips, and all the other people, Keith Roy, Matthew, one of our young, outstanding farmers. I want to thank you all. Glenbow, Anthony Williams from Lodge, and we could go on and on. Marson, Easton Marson from Shadwell, and several other persons. Mr. Armstrong, Pete's in St. Peter's. You know who you are from the bottom of the heart. Thank you very much for supporting food security in St. Kitts and Nevis. May God bless our people and may God bless our country. I thank you much.